Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and like Mary, my soul is indeed magnifying the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in Lord God, my Savior. As Pastor Sarah preached and sang last Sunday, this joy that we have does not exclude the moments of grief in mourning our many losses, but it is rooted in our God, who walks through the pains and joys of our lives with us. This joy that we have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Amen? And so is our hope, our peace, and eventually on this Sunday, our love. In today's scripture, Mary shows her longing for God who has changed her life as an impoverished young woman from an insignificant town of the Roman Empire and has called her to do and say amazing things to the whole world. As Patrick Chen, a Chinese American theologian portrays in his book, Radical Love, Mary is, quote, the bearer of the radical love that is expressed in her yes to God in the incarnation, an event that changed the whole course of salvation history. Mary is the bearer of radical love because her very existence dissolves the traditional boundaries about family life as well as gender roles, amen? Mary is the bearer of radical love because as a women prophets like Miriam, Deborah, and Hannah sing songs to praise God in the Hebrew Bible, she bears witness to God's love in lifting up the lowly, yet bringing down the powerful through the coming of God's kingdom in Christ Jesus. Now God, according to the Magnificat, is the one who sends forth this radical love. Patrick Chen again says about this, quote, God's revelation through prophets like Mary is an act of radical love because it dissolves the boundaries between the powerful and the weak. God's message sent forth as the infant Jesus in the incarnation reveals God's solidarity with the marginalized and vulnerable and not just the powerful and the elite. And similarly, God's message sent forth as a Jesus who ministers to those who are called unclean, reveals God's preference for the outcast and the excluded, and not just religiously respectful people, unquote. And this nature of God is precisely the reason for Mary's joy. In Luke 1.48, Mary says, that she rejoices in Lord, her savior, because God has looked with favor on her lowliness, or as translated, humiliation or oppression. As these English translations suggest, the word lowliness may concern oppressive and even threatening circumstances, especially for an impoverished Jewish young woman like Mary in the Roman Empire. As it is claimed by the New Testament scholar Warren Carter, quote, given Luke's context, Mary, as with many others, lives under the oppressive Roman Empire, ruled by a very different savior and God from the mighty one of Israel. And this very different savior and God is called Caesar. Mary then elaborates three aspects of oppressive powers in verses 51 through 53. First, the proud consists of much more than arrogant individuals. Instead, throughout our biblical traditions, 
This word casts the whole imperial social system in a negative theological perspective as resistant to God's purposes. And likewise, the powerful constitutes the oppressive status of those who occupy thrones in ruling over those of low status and poverty. Whereas the rich refers to the imperial structures that ensure rich exist because of the poor, hungry people. And in the context of radical love, we can understand the proud, the powerful, and the rich as humanity's rejection of the radical love that God has given to us. In other words, if radical love is understood as a love so extreme that it changes existing power dynamics, then the rejection of this radical love is the reinforcing of the boundaries that keep categories separate and distinct from each other. Now, in contrast to the oppressive imperial powers, verse 40, 54 names Israel's need for God's help, fostering hope for change. Mary claims that God has done great things and that God has shown power with arm and scattered the proud, which echoes Miriam's prophetic voice for God overcoming the Pharaoh and the Egyptians in Exodus. This also echoes Luke's own portrayal of the poor man lying at the rich man's gate in Jesus' parable named Lazarus, which means God's helps in its Hebrew form, Eliaza. And unlike the anonymous rich man, Lazarus and his father Abraham, whom Mary also names in her son today, are the only named characters in any of Jesus' parables. And there's power in this action of naming. And just like the boundaries between the rich and the poor in the Magnificat, the irony in Lazarus' name is obvious. The only help Lazarus could receive would come from God. Since the rich man was not doing justice and loving mercy as God had commanded in the law and the prophets. In fact, this stands in sharp contrast to Jesus' promise of reward for the rich that invite the poor for their tables in Luke 14. And his encounter with the rich tax collector Zacchaeus who repents and responds to the needs of the poor in Luke 19. In fact, the very Jesus born of Mary embodies this radical love and ministers toward the recovery of this radical love that was lost so long by humanity in his earthly ministry. As it is suggested again by Patrick Chan, quote, throughout his ministry, Jesus constantly dissolved the religious and social boundaries of his time. He touched unclean people such as lepers and bleeding women. He spoke with social outcasts such as Samaritans. In other words, Jesus Christ dissolved the holy boundary of clean and unclean, holy and profane, saint and sinner. He challenged the religious and political authorities of his day and to such an extent that he was ultimately put to death." Unquote. Now the challenges that our church communities today face strongly echo the oppressive rule of the Roman Empire and the division of God's people during the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. When the majority of the Jewish people lived in tremble under the iron fist of the Roman Empire and hoped that their Messiah would save them from such persecution and suffering, Jesus showed a messianic way that was com completely different from what the public had expected. Unlike the holy Messiah taught by the Pharisees who demarcated themselves from tax collectors and prostitutes, Jesus was concerned about the situation of these social outcasts and had dinner with sinners. Unlike the priestly king envisioned 
by the Sadducees to maintain the political and religious stability of the Jewish nation. Jesus constantly challenged the norm established by these authorities in the Jerusalem temple and preached the gospel to bring healing to all kinds of illness and to call all nations into the kingdom of God. And unlike the triumphant Messiah that the zealous expected to overthrow their Roman oppressors violently, Jesus spoke of the suffering of the people in a peaceful and nonviolent way and called upon the Roman and Jewish leaders to take responsibility for the injustice that they caused against the marginalized Jewish people. Jesus did not completely deny the significance of moral integrity, social stability, and justice issues that they were concerned about. But he granted the new meanings and thus pointed out the way of healing amidst the traumatic oppression and chaotic disputes. Therefore, in space of social segregation and spiritual brokenness of our time, I believe what is urgently needed among us is a prophetic message that testifies to God's radical love in transforming lives and bringing about justice and mercy of God's kingdom. Amen. Furthermore, we can find parallels to Mary's song in the songs of African-American slavery and civil rights struggles. Concerning these prophetic voices that challenge the imperial powers of ancient Rome and modern United States. Warren Carter says, quote, they name contexts of oppressive power, bestow dignity, envision transformation and secure community. They frame the gospel's negotiation of imperial powers as contested resistance, unquote. Now a more contemporary example of such contested resistance could be found on the cover page of the bulletin for our worship service this morning. It is a powerful icon of Mary that was commissioned by Father Mark Ozuti Jones, a priest at Trinity Church Wall Street after the 2014 shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. The icon is called Our Lady, Mother of Ferguson, and all those killed by gun violence. It depicts Mary as a black Madonna in a hands up, don't shoot position. In front of her is a small black Jesus, also with his hands up in the crosshairs of a gun. Both Mary and Jesus have their hands up, not just because they are threatened, but also ironically, in the same pose, they are praising and praying to God who will judge those that would try to do them harm. For me, this icon highlights the spiritual underpinnings of the Black Lives Matter movement and the prophetic voice of countering the imperial powers of white supremacy in this country and all over the world for centuries. It is a powerful reminder of how Mary can be a source of comfort and healing during the most painful times in our lives, especially in the midst of street violence and shootings in this city. For me and my fellow Chinese overseas students, the loss of two members of our U Chicago community, Yiran Fan and Xiao Xiong, Dennis Zhen, and the painful cries of their mothers like our Lady Ferguson remain heartbreaking. Mary, for us, is a sign of the Advent vision of hope for change and of God's radical love toward God's children in resisting injustice, amen? As challenging as COVID times ministry could be, I have witnessed how our Hyde Park Union Church members persist in doing justice and loving mercy, either by feeling the hungry with good things in helping the Hyde Park Food Pantry, or by lifting up one another in setting up health and wellness programs like meditation on Zoom. 
it has been an important reminder that God uses unexpected folks in unexpected ways to carry out God's purposes. Just as God called an impoverished young woman from an insignificant town of the Roman Empire. Like Mary, the bearer of radical love, we are called to bear witness to the coming of God's kingdom in justice and to give birth to God's children as the church, the mother of Christ's followers in mercy. Like Jesus, the embodiment of radical love, we are called to recover some part of this broken world from rejecting this radical love into receiving and expressing it. Like our God, the one who sent forth this radical love, we are called to send one another off for the sake of prophetic ministry represented by women prophets like Mary. Later this afternoon, Lake County de Chicago will pre present their cross cultural concert celebrating Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa in this sanctuary. And our very beloved Trinity and Liberty Bryant will perform Mary a Holiday Dancicle with a traditional Black nativity told through ballet, hip hop, tap, and contemporary dance. All these wonderful women prophesy their vision of justice and love in varieties of forms today. May we also, may we also witness this radical love toward God's creation, God's people, and God's children through the Magnificat. And our Christmas message is thus ultimately about God's radical love. God is love. God became human in Jesus Christ out of a mother's love for her baby child. Scripture promises us that nothing, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is no love that is more radical than that. The world didn't give it, and the world can take it away. Amen. Amen. Now, echoing Mary's song, I'd like to close my sermon with a song of the civil rights movement in the 1960s, and gonna let nobody turn me around. The lyrics will be nobody, no hatred, injustice, street violence, and then finally back to nobody. You may sing along with me. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking. Marching up to freedom land Ain't gonna let no hatred Turn me around Turn me around Turn me around Ain't gonna let no hatred Turn me around I'm gonna keep on a walking Keep on a talking Marching up to freedom land Ain't gonna let injustice Turn me around Turn me around, turn me around, ain't gonna let injustice turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking, marching up to freedom land. Ain't gonna let street violence turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let street violence turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking, marching up to freedom land. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking, 
Marching up to freedom land. Thanks be to God.